Now, the next question we have is, we learned how to calculate these statistics, but what are they trying to tell us? All right, so let's look at the example you just did. All right, it's made up of the numbers 6, 5, 7, 9, 15, and 30. Okay, so the sample mean is going to be somewhere between the lowest and the highest number. Okay, so in some sense, the sample mean is supposed to be telling us where the middle of this sample is. Okay, but we have several different statistics that are going to define for us where the middle is, only using different definitions of the middle. The sample mean is supposed to be telling us, at least in some sense, where the middle of our data set is. So down at the bottom, we have plotted all our values, starting from 6 up to 30. And we're looking for that point where we are in the middle, whatever that means. All right, so the sample mean is the point where when we compare all the distances to the points that are to the left, okay, and we take the distances from the mean and all the points to the right, and we add up those distances, the total distance between the mean and the values that are lower than it, and the total distance between the mean and the values that are larger than it, are going to be equal to each other. Okay? In physics, we call this the center of mass. It's that point where we have balance. Now notice the mean doesn't care. In this data set, right, we had a mean of 12, and there were four numbers smaller than 12, only two larger than 12, all right, but that 30 was way larger than 12. All right, so let's go back to the variance and figure out what it's telling us. So we're gonna follow our formula. The first step we had was the x minus x bar, right? And we did this for each one of our values of x. So we need to understand what this is telling us. So this results in a negative 6, negative 7, negative 5, negative 3, 3, and 18. So notice some of those numbers are negative, some are positive. Well, the negatives are coming when your x values were below average. The positives are coming when your x values were above average. Right? And if you notice, take the negative numbers, add them up. Right? You get negative 21. You add the positive numbers up, you get 21. Right? Because those total distances, remember from a minute ago, to the left and to the right had to be equal. All right? So this term, x minus x bar, we're comparing the location of a data value to our point of reference, the mean. Okay? So x minus x bar tells us, we'll call it the directed distance from the mean. So the x minus x bar told us not only the distance that point was from the mean, but which direction. Now remember, after that, we squared each of those terms. So now we're going to take those directions and distances and square those. So we're going to lose the positive and negative signs, the indicator of where the value was relative to the mean. So we no longer have our direction. What we have is the distance. Only those distances have been squared. Right? So x minus x bar quantity squared tells us the squared distances from the mean for each of our values. Now, notice here that you know, when you start squaring those large numbers, they become very large. All right, so all of our x minus x bar squared terms are positive, right? And that 30 that was way above average of 12, when we square that, we get that giant, giant number over 320. So we have our x minus x bar term, that told us the distance and direction from the mean, so how far above or below average your x was. Then we squared those terms. If we think about our formula, what are we doing with the x minus x bar squares? We're taking these pieces, adding them up and then dividing. Adding them up and then dividing. Wait, if we add a bunch of numbers and divide, isn't that an average? So essentially, your sample variance is the average of those squared distances from the mean. Now, it's not quite average in the strict sense, because if we were finding the average, we should be dividing by the number of squared distances we have, which would be n, not n minus 1. But remember, our goal here was not to calculate the average squared distance from the mean. Instead, we were handed this formula for the sample variance, and we wanted to know what it was trying to tell us. Okay? So the sample variance essentially tells you the average squared distance from the mean. So the further away from the mean your numbers are, 
right? The bigger the distances from the mean, the bigger the squared distances and the bigger the average squared distances, right? So if S squared is large, your sample is really spread out. And if your sample variance is small, that means your numbers on average are not that far away from the mean. So if those distances are small and you square them, you get small answers, you get small averages of those squared distances. The final thing I want to look at is our sample standard deviation. Now remember, the symbol for that is S. S is literally the square root of our sample variance. So interpretation-wise, if the sample variance is the average squared distance from the mean, if we square root that, we're going to lose the squared. And that's what we have. Our sample standard deviation essentially tells us the average distance from the mean. Now, strictly speaking, it's not the average distance from the mean because, one, we squared the distances, then averaged them almost with that n minus 1 factor, and then we took the square root at the end. Okay, So this is like or similar to the average distance from the mean, which is why we don't call s the average distance from the mean. Okay? If we actually want to define the average distance from the mean, there's a term for that in statistics. It's called MAD. It's the mean absolute deviation. In that, we calculate the distance from the mean for each value, add them up, and divide by how many values you had. Okay? So instead, S is called our sample standard deviation. Okay? So standard, typical, average, they're all synonyms, at least in some sense. Okay? And standard deviation, right? Deviation is how far we stray from the norm, right? From the center. And remember, X bar is our center, X bar is our norm. All right, so that term standard deviation means typical uh, or average distance strayed from the norm. Now, let's talk about the units on each of these variables. Okay, so, so far we've talked about this data set 2, 5, negative 1, and 10. This is our first set of data okay, in this abstract sense. Okay, so I want you to imagine this is you and three of your friends, your college buddies, and how much cash you have on you. One of you has $2, one of you has $5, one of you is owe somebody a dollar, and the other one has 10 bucks. Okay? So in total, you guys have $16. Okay, that's the sum of the X's. Since there's four of you, you have on average $4 each. Some of you had more than four, some had less than four. Okay? But on average, $4 each. So that means if you make a late night Taco Bell run and the first person spends $6, uh, the other people can't all spend more than $4 because you get back below that average of four to bring that six down to the average, right? Because remember, the average is that center point. It's that balance. Every time a number goes above average, there's got to be a number or combination of numbers the same distance below the average to keep our balance. So both the sum of the values and the sample mean have the same units as the X's do. So again, if this is dollars, two, five, negative one, and $10, when you add up the X's, you get $16 total. Divide that by four people, that's $16 per person. Okay. Now, if that's the case, then when we square those pieces, we get square whatever. So if our units here are dollars originally, then we're getting squared dollars here. And finally, when we take our standard deviation, we would be unsquaring those squared units. And so our sample standard deviation has the same units as the X's do. All right, so if your data set is in hours, your sum of the values will be in hours, your average will be in hours, your variance will be in squared hours or hours squared, and the standard deviation would be back in hours. If you have any questions about the topics covered in this video or anything else that's happening in your statistical reasoning class, talk to your instructor. Go to their office hours, 
or take advantage of the free tutoring available in the Math Tutorial Center. Good luck and go Vols!